So the last video dealt with the base units in the metric system for time, for amount, for distance. Um, but we're also going to deal with a few other units in this class that don't fall into those base units. And those are what we call derived units. Derived units are a combination of base units used to describe other properties. So for instance, um, let's say you're trying to measure the volume of something. The volume is the amount of space an object takes up. And from math class, you may have learned that volume is length times width times height. So um, we know that the unit for length, width, and height are the meter, uh, because both all of those are really lengths. And so meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. Okay, so the unit for volume is meters cubed. But sometimes you may also see another unit for volume, which is the liter. Now, uh, the way we convert between meters cubed, which is the true SI unit, and the liter is by this conversion. We say that one milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. So you may see volume measured in liters. Another derived unit uh, occurs when we talk about density. Density is how tightly packed um, the matter in an object is. Um, so if you have um, a, uh, a gas, it's not very dense, but if you have the same substance as a solid, then it is more dense. A soda can isn't very dense, but when you crush it, it becomes more dense. And the way we calculate density is we divide the mass by the volume. Okay, so if we can divide mass by volume, um, we end up with um, the unit of mass divided by the unit of volume. And so we con uh, commonly measure density in terms of grams, which is the unit of mass, divided by milliliters, which is the unit of volume. So these are the derived units. Okay, I did want to do one other problem for you. Um, this is going to form the basis of a problem that you're going to do in class. So I just wanted to walk this through. Um, I think this is something you've probably done in math class, but I just wanted to show you uh, how this works. So if you live 35 miles from DJO and traffic flows at 22 miles per hour, how long will it take you to get to school? So uh, you have a distance and you have a speed, and it's asking you to find a time, okay? So there's a formula we use to convert uh, that relates the speed with the distance and the time, or the rate with the distance and the time, and that's this equation. That says that the rate at which you travel is equal to the distance divided by the time. So if you travel uh, 22 miles in one hour, that means you travel 22 miles per hour. And I hope you can see how the units here are dividing just like uh, variables in an algebra equation. Miles divided by hours is miles per hour. Uh, if you travel 44 miles in two hours, then it's still 22 miles per hour. Rate is distance divided by time. Um, then um, you can divide both sides by the uh, rate and multiply both sides by the time to get time is equal to distance divided by rate. Or you can get this equation over here. If you just multiply this, both sides of this equation by the time, you get rate times time equals distance. Now, rather than memorizing these three equations or doing the algebra, you can do a little bit of shorthand here. You can make this pyramid, write D over here, distance, rate, R over here, and time, T over here. And if you just understand this line to mean divide, and this vertical line here to be multiply, if you just cover up um, the variable that you're looking for, you generate all these three equations. So let's say I cover up the D, D is equal to R times T. I cover up the R, R is equal to D over T. I cover up the T, T is equal to D over R. So for this equation, it's asking me how long. 
how long is a time? So I can cover up the t. t is equal to d over r, uh, which means that t is equal to 35 miles divided by 22 miles uh, divided by hours. And so my answer is going to be 1.59 hours. And uh, rounding that up is going to be 1.6 hours.